All right, Scratch programmers, welcome back. Today, or in this lesson, I don't know if it's a separate day for you or not, I want to go over a new block for us called the clone block. And cloning, kind of like what they do in Star Wars, you're just going to make copies of something over and over again. And it's when you want to make a lot of something that are pretty simple, a lot of simple little things, like our spaceship here, is kind of complicated, so we don't want to make a lot of those. The rocks might be something we clone. The bullets may be something we clone, too, if you want to be able to shoot a lot of bullets. But for today, I'm going to try just doing some cloning as a different way for us to do our fire special effects. So right now, if you remember, when we fly around, we do this animation, and we switch between a couple of flame pictures that we've drawn. You see in our costumes here, it switches between those, and it gives that nice little fire effect. But I want to try a different one, and we'll make it where we spew out little fireballs as a different effect for us flying around. Okay? So let's try that. So we're going to add a new sprite, and we're going to paint it. And I was saying little fireballs, so let's paint a little full circle. Doesn't really matter how thick our line is. About like that. Just a red little circle like that. And that's a little big, but we can shrink it down with our little shrink tool. Okay, so we'll shrink it. Should be pretty small. And that's going to be our little fireball that comes out. So in our spaceship, we have these different costumes. And instead, what we're going to do, instead of when the up arrow key is pressed, that used to go and move us, as well as switch to a flaming costume. One of the flaming costumes. Instead, what we're going to try now is to create a clone of Sprite 1. Let's give Sprite 1 a better name. We go into the eye there on that. I'm going to call this Fireball. Okay. So we're going to create a clone of the Fireball each time. And clones are down in control here. And it says, when I start as a clone, but we're not going to, the spaceship's not going to start as a clone. We're going to create a clone of, and it says myself, but remember when it has those little drop downs, then you can choose what it is. And we're going to choose Fireball. So when the up arrow key is pressed, let's move five steps, then create a clone of Fireball. Okay, so Fireball, what it has to do over here. Let's start working on its code. Now, the first thing you notice is our fireball is just stuck right there. And the proper fireball that we want to have isn't going to be stuck right there. So when the green flag is clicked, our fireball sprite, this guy right here, needs to hide itself. Okay. And so that will hide the fireball. But now we need to create the fireball as well. Well, the f actually, the spaceship is creating many clones of the fireball, but not the fireball sprite itself. And that's kind of what's a little tricky here. You need to think of the two as different items. So there's the sprite, and then there's clones of the sprite. And you remember when we were looking here at creating it, one of the first things was when I start as a clone. So there's two ways that this fireball exists. Normally as a sprite, and it does something when the green flag is clicked, which is going to be hide itself. And then when it starts as a clone. And that's where we're going to do a lot of our logic here. So when we start as a clone, the fireball clone needs to go to the spaceship, right? We want to go to it. And well, now it's just always going to go to the same place. So how do we find out where the spaceship is? It was over in sensing. You remember we have this little drop down here. 
it gives us a lot of value. So exposition a fireball, but it has these little drop downs. So we know, hey, we can change this lot. I'm going to move these two around so that it's easier for us to work. Because green flag click, that's going to stay short and just hide. This part's going to grow a little bit here, might get a little long. We'll see. Oh, it's going to get a little long right now. Because I need the X position of the fireball and the Y position of the fireball. But I don't really want the X and Y of the fireball because that's where I am right now. We want to go to where the spaceship is when we start as a clone. Okay. So now what happens? Nothing else. Well, remember, this guy's been hidden. So when we do a hide, we have to do a show. Okay, so now you see all these clones exist behind us. Well, that's okay, but not that interesting. So, what else do we want to do? We, if we start over again, right? When you shoot this fireball out of the spaceship, we expect it to go somewhere, right? Not just allow us to draw things. So, let's do that a little bit. Let's loop. Well, I don't know. 10's a, 10's a good number to start with. And let's move a little bit. And let's see what that behavior now looks like. Well, that's okay, except the fire is going the wrong way. Well, it's not going the wrong way, but it's always going to the right. All right. So, its direction is a little off. So let's think about this. What direction do we want it to go to? Hmm. So if we always are pointing to the right, that's kind of what we're doing right now. All right. We're going to the right. That's not what we want to do. So if we point in the direction and we know, hey, this is kind of related to the direction of the spaceship, right? So let's point in the direction of the spaceship. So now we're kind of just like a miniature spaceship. Oh, getting killed by these rocks real fast. They're kind of like bullets. So we don't want to, we want to point in this direction that's related to the spaceship, but we want to point the other way, right? So let's point in the direction of the spaceship and then let's turn how many degrees? 360 would be all the way around. And they say when you change your mind on something, you've done a 180 degree turn. So that means you just turn halfway around and face the other way. So now, now we're starting to look a little bit better, right? Except after we don't want to leave all this trail of fireballs around. So what do you think? After we move those 10 steps, we want to go back and hide again. Let's see what that looks like now. Looks a little bit better, right? Though it's a little strange how it just ends at that one point. Right? And when you fly around, you have that strange sort of tail behind you. So, let's see what we can do there. And I think... We let's as we go and we move further away, let's change our effect. And I think the one we want to do here is a ghost effect. So that should make us look more and more like a ghost. And let's see if changing the ghost effect by 10 does anything. And now it fades out a little bit, right? What do you think that looks? That looks kind of nice. So we have this little jet trail that comes behind us. And you notice, I don't know if you guys have seen this as you're playing around with it, drive it around, that after a little while they all disappear. And then it stops to work, it stops working. Why is that? Right? But if you hit the green flag again, they come back. So it works for a little while, and then it stops working. What could that be? Well, clones, as I'm telling you, in the beginning, they're a little different than sprites. 
and clones because you're just making copies and copies and copies of them. They don't want them to get out of control. They don't want you to just create hundreds of thousands of millions of billions of clones. That's going to make your computer go pretty slow. And well, that's pretty much it. That's the only bad thing that goes on is it could make your computer go slow, maybe even crash and freeze. So there's a limit on the number of clones that you could have running in the world at one time. And it's not a limit on the number you can create, but a limit on the number you can have running at any time. So this guy starts as a clone, shows itself, hides itself. And now you can imagine we just have a bunch of hidden clones all over the screen. Just like how there's this one sprite for Fireball that's over here in this area, right? We hid him. He's hiding out right there. There's all these other clones hiding elsewhere around the screen as I flew around. And if we go back into the control section, there's when I start as a clone, create a clone, and then this last block here, delete this clone. And that's what we need to do here at the end. Once we've hidden it, delete it. We could actually not even hide it and just delete it, but we can hide it, then delete it. And once you do that, that frees up your clone counter in a sense. That And there is a limit, sorry. The limit is 300 clones you can create. So without this delete, if I just run it, I can create 300 little fireballs. And after I create 300 of them, they say, hey, that's as many clones that you can have running at one time. Don't make any more until you get rid of some of the ones that you've already made. Okay, let's delete the clones. Let's start over again. And now if I go, when they go and they hide, they're going to delete themselves afterwards. And so now I should be able to just fly around forever with our little fireball tail. Okay. So you see that you can delete the, if you delete the clones, you're not going to have that problem. But that problem where we ran out of clones, that was because we ran into our 300 limit there on clones. Okay. So this looks pretty good. It's got a particular style to it. But you know me, I like to mess things up, make it a little messier, make it a little more random. So let's try a couple other things. I want to... Spread the fire out. I think it, it looks kind of nice like this. It reminds me of a chain, those beaded chains that you have or necklaces. But I think that's a little too pretty for this, especially the way that the rest of our animations are. <laughs> when you blow up that rock, it looks a little savage with a lot of different colors. So I'd like to mix up the colors a bit. <laughs> and one way we could do that here, if I want to have a rainbow of fireballs, is just change the costume. So let's copy this one. And then we can use this paint bucket and change its fill color. Make it a little more orange. Get my paint bucket. And now it becomes an orange one. And then if we go back into the scripts, when we get started as a clone, we can just pick a random costume. Or we can always switch to the next costume. That would make it go consistently, I guess. Oh, I guess not. It always starts off as that costume. Oh, the clones don't share costumes. So we can't do the next costume. We want to switch to a costume. But I want to switch to one in particular. Let's pick a random number. A one, two. Let's see if that gives us different fireball colors, right? And so now the fireball colors are a little bit different. I'm starting to see some flickering there in my spaceship. Why do you think that is? I think it's because our fireball is starting right at our spaceship center, right? And we don't really want it to start at the center. If you look closely, it's lighting up right there. We want it to start a little bit further. So once we've pointed in the right direction, let's move a little bit. Let's move 10 steps. Let's see if 
that's a good place to start the fire. Still a little flickering. Our spaceship's maybe a little bigger. Let's try 20 steps. And now it's starting outside of our spaceship, right? It's changing colors as it shoots back. But it shoots back in such a such a constant direction, right? So what happens if we don't go in a constant direction or a consistent direction? Let's add some more randomness. We got a random color. Let's change our direction just a little bit. So let's so we're pointing in the right direction, but let's just turn a little bit. And we can turn to the right 15 degrees, but we need to make it random, right? So if we turn to the right 1 to 10 degrees, what's that going to do for us? That shakes the flame a little bit. Let's try it a little bit more, 1 to 20 degrees. Sometimes you just got to experiment with these numbers, right? And find out what feels good to you. You might like different numbers than me too, right? If you say, oh, I like this animation. So that looks okay, though we're only wiggling to the right. So really to make it even, we should be able to go minus 20 to 20. So now we're turned to the right or we might turn to the left if we pick a negative number. And so now our spaceship's flickering a little more random fire. I don't know, I still maybe like a little bit more. Minus 30 and 30. There. That's the kind of noisy mess I want out of my spaceship shooting out. And the same thing, you can add different costumes. If you want a couple more costumes, just change the color. I think we had yellow fire in our drawing as well. Oh, but our random number was just one to two. So let's pick one, two, three now, since we have three different fireballs that we could use. Got the green flag. And so now we're using clones. We create a little bit more noise for each of the clones, and we have some fire that shoots out of our rocket. And you can imagine these clones can be used. Like I was saying, we could use them maybe for the rocks if we wanted to, to have a bunch of little rocks floating around, the baseballs. But what's tricky about them, and we'll get into clones more in other lessons, is sometimes the way they interact with other objects is a little hard to figure out. So this, this is a little simple fireball effect. doesn't interact with anything. It's just going to shoot the flames out. That's a good case for clones to start with at least, all right? And we'll experiment more with them later on. Limit of 300 clones. Make sure you delete your cone at the end. And I think that's about it. So this is just another different style you can have. And you can, you know, add this effect to anything that's moving to make your animation a little bit better. If you wanna have glitter coming out, you can just change the colors. If you want to have a rainbow coming out, change the colors. And this one, we just sort of went with fire themed for our rocket so that it would shoot around little bits. And then this ghost effect was a way for us to hide it. Let's mess around with that ghost effect a little bit more. If we do it, if we make this bigger, I think it started off as 25, right? Then you see it goes invisible sooner. And so that's a way of shortening it out. I feel like that's too too quick so if we just change it by 10 also because 10 we're doing it 10 times that's a hundred percent so the ghost effect starts off at zero and goes up to a hundred percent that's how i kind of picked it there to go with okay though it was interesting i just noticed when we died that you still get to fly around with an invisible spaceship that just shoots fire out that's just our purifier effect there. Well, I'll leave that for you to figure out how to turn that off, but it's gonna be basically something about here, right? Not to let your game keep going if you end up getting blown up. It might be something in the game over state, sort of the spaceship boom hide, you broadcast game over, 
the stage receives game over and then there is this guy right here stop all that would stop everything when the game ends and now you know see it can't go anymore okay all right you guys enjoy that if you have any questions about clones let me know